Are there any luxury purchases that you didn't make that still haunt you? Today I want to talk about my five biggest luxury regrets. My name is Kathy if we haven't met and I'm all about empowering women to pursue luxury in all areas of their life. I often talk about beauty, fashion, and definitely lifestyle. Let's get to my regrets. I think everybody that's into luxury probably has a, a, lot, a good number of luxury regrets. I would say I first started liking luxury items when I was probably in high school. My sister was into magazines. She would bring home Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, Elle, and I would just like read them. And I remember looking at all the prices like, how much do they want for this? I remember as I got older and I started going to actual stores, I would go to like Neiman Markets and I would see things and touch things and be like, oh, okay, this is why things are so expensive, right? If you've seen my, my winter coat collection video, you'll know that I have an extensive coat collection. I also have a lot of spring coats. When I lived in Arizona, I had a ton of trench coats and you know biker jackets. My fifth luxury regret is this Burberry Moto trench coat. And it was just this beautiful marriage of the traditional Burberry trench coat with the sleeves and the shoulders of a luxury motorcycle jacket. I saw the pictures of it on the runway. I also saw it in magazines and I was just like. I know that Burberry has had similar versions of this coat in later lines. It was a fairly popular item, but from what I've seen, in the later iterations, it just nothing has lived up to the style and the probably and more than likely the quality of the first one. I, I find that brands, the first time they do something, it's like they they make a, a very limited run. They you know they do the best of the best, and then after that, if it sells, they may you know they have to cut corners because they're they're gonna be producing it on a mass scale. This coat, if I could find the original coat of this because I would buy it. And I feel like a part of me at the time, I, I was probably young, I, was in, I know I was in my 20s, but so it was not in my budget to buy a thousand dollar coat. And I'm sure that coat, this coat is like three to five thousand dollars now. I would probably still wear this coat and you couldn't tell me anything. And people, and I'm sure the people who own this coat have are probably still hoarding it. So my fourth luxury regret is not buying the Chanel Classic Slab in like 2012 when I first when I first learned about it and when I first saw it up front. A coworker of mine, I was working as a consultant in LA, a coworker of mine had bought one and I remember everybody at work was a bug because everybody was like, she spent five thousand dollars on this on this Chanel bag. And so I remember it as distinctly it was it was black caviar, gold hardware, the 24 karat gold plated hardware it, I believe it was a jumbo size. It was gorgeous. I remember we all went to we all went to eat one day for happy hour, and I was just staring at her bag. And I think within the month, I went to the Chanel I went to the Chanel boutique at Saks Fifth Avenue in Beverly Hills, and I asked them. I was like, I want one of those Chanel bags, and they asked me more questions, and they were like, Oh yeah, those black bags have at least a six month wait. And for me, I was I knew nothing about Chanel. I was kind of really dejected and was like, Okay, well why why what's so special about this bag that there's like a wait list and you know i didn't even ask to put myself on the wait list because i was just like whatever i still wanted to know more about the bag so i did do some google search i think at the time you know per i looked probably looked up purse blog either then or just later on at the time i really had a, a, a i wanted a, to buy a luxury bag at the time and i also there was another bag i was hunting for which was the celine phantom in like the embossed croc i was in love with that bag and that bag was completely sold out. So that year, <laughs> to scratch my itch, I ended up buying this Celine tie bag. It's, this is the largest size, and this bag has been through some battles. I think after I bought the bag, I still traveled for four years back and forth from Chicago to LA as a consultant, and then as an employee at a startup, and it was just, yo, this bag has been through it. It's like, you don't even wanna see the inside. There's stains, everything. It's still a good bag, it's still beautiful, but when I bought it, I didn't know that, you know, people baby bags. I just had always <laughs> done the most to my bags and just was like, oh, I'll just buy another one. So I, when I think back, I was like, I really wish I would have took the time to buy the bag. Cause when I look at the, the bags, like this was my, I would say, unfortunately my third choice. My first choice was definitely the Chanel Classical Flat. But once I heard that there was a wait list, you know, at the time this was 2012. So I didn't know a bunch about like how the wait list worked and how, 
I, I wasn't even sure at the time how long my contract in LA was gonna last. So I didn't wanna have to put myself on a wait list and then not have a bag or when I, it's time for me to get the bag, I'm, I'm no longer in LA, you know, just be problematic. <laughs> That's my fourth luxury regret. I'm a big fan of all of Phoebe Philo's collections for Celine. I've been obsessed with the Celine Phantom the, and the luggage bags for a long time. And currently, no, now, those bags I can find on the resale market for below retail. My third luxury regret that I do have is not buying the Celine bamboo necklace when it came out. I remember seeing the necklace. I think for some, a few years, I had stopped buying luxury items just because at the time I was trying to do other things with my life. And so I kind of saw this necklace and I remember it was, I believe it was either the second to the last or the last Phoebe Philo collection for Celine. And so I remember seeing it, really liking it, thinking, oh, I'll be able to get it later or whatever. It's probably been a year that I've been looking for it and I cannot find it like anywhere near retail. And think, one thing that complicates it is that they're initials. Like sometimes I will see certain letters, like I want to see. So the C's I've been seeing for $700, $1,000. I think the, the retail price for this was $360, which of course devastates me if, if for, you know, to want to have to buy it for a thousand dollars. And I will see letters like certain letters, like maybe like the letter P or something. There are certain letters that are just closer to retail. I even went as far as to buy a dupe from Etsy. I did like it, but I wanted to make sure that it was something I really wanted to purchase. Once I purchased it from Etsy and I wore it, I ended up buying a, an M because they didn't have C's at the time. And once I bought it, I realized, okay, I really like this, but I want a letter C. Let me figure out how to get a C. Getting a C has been very, has been next to impossible. Every time I, I, it does pop up, I think the last one that popped up was like a thousand dollars. I've definitely seen one. Actually, I've seen one for 700, but I didn't feel like spending $700. I'm trying to wait for it to, to get below $700 in the 600 range. And I think right when it did, somebody else purchased it. So yeah, I'm just living with my regret right now. And that's my third, <laughs> that's my third item. 2018, 2017. I started getting into more, liking more sneakers. I've always worn sneakers to work out. I work out every day, but I never, you know, I would rarely wear them outside of the workout. Like I'm one of those people, like I wear stuff to work out and then I wear stuff there. But so around 2017, I started wearing, I started liking more and more sneakers. My second luxury regret is not buying the Gucci Flash Trek Sega sneakers with the removable, crystals in the, in the white. The background on that is at the time I was working with a brand and I had a discount. So I was able to get these for, you know, maybe 20, 30% off, which, you know, for a thousand dollar sneaker is a big deal. And I liked them and I really liked them. And I remember um, somebody I knew, one of my coworkers had ha had them and I, I was just in love with them. And I think in my mind, I was like, I'll just wait. Or actually, you know, maybe it was at the time, it wasn't fiscally responsible for me to get them. So I was like, okay, you know, for me, sometimes I will make the decision, like I'll wait and get it. And I, uh, now that I look back, I should get them because I've been trying to, I've been trying to bid for them. Um, I was on StockX and some other places looking for them in my size. And I feel like everybody who has them is like holding on to them and doesn't want to get them. And I'm kind of worried about, I feel like StockX is one of the few places where I will buy it from because I know it's going to be new and not dirty. I feel like if I buy them on eBay, somebody's going to sell me a used pair and it's a white sneaker. So I don't really want a used pair. I was at the real, real, they had the green pair. Same thing with StockX. They have the green pair, which is super cute. Currently, I'm still living in regret for that. And actually, you know what? Like I could do a whole video on all the sneakers that I regret not buying because <laughs> there's so many sneakers, like streetwear sneakers that I missed just because I was getting into the mode of like, oh, I like sneakers, should I buy them? Not knowing that, you know, sneakers are very limited release. You know, I knew nothing at the time about the resale market and the stock X's and uh, the goats that are in shoes that sell for double, you know, double, triple retail. I, I knew nothing about that. Actually. Um, there's two sneakers that I want that are 10 times their retail and I'm just crushed. So like I said, I can do a whole video on all the sneakers that I missed out on. But the number one, the one that I'm unable to get right now, I can't even find it in my size, is Gucci Flash Trek Sega in white. And that's my second regret. So my biggest regret, number one, is the Chanel Dad Sandals. And the ones I want are black caviar leather, gold hardware. Oh my gosh. 
I am obsessed with these. I have a real problem. So <laughs> I've purchased so many dupes or lookalikes. It's ridiculous. Like, let me show you. I have a Nike pair and I bought these Nike pairs last year because I couldn't get them. I have these white Tevias that are super cute. And I recently, I like just yesterday, I got these Zara dupes that look almost like them. They kind of scratch the itch, but they're not it. And you know, it's, it's funny because I remember seeing them and thinking I liked them and just kind of like, you know, they were, they were a slow burn on me. Cause at first I was like, oh, are they ugly? Then I was like, I think the first time I saw them, I was like, oh, they're kind of ugly, but they're cute. And then I think by the second or third time I saw them, I was like full blown in love. Let me find out where I can get these these dad sets. As, as anybody who's ever tried to buy Chanel, you can't buy it online, right? You have to go into a store. By the time I really wanted them, the stores had shut down. I, I believe they came out in 2019. I really wasn't paying attention. It was cold in Chicago. And so by the time, you know, I started seeing people wearing them 2020. You know, because a lot of people had bought them in 2019. They still were in stores. I know one girl who I follow bought them like, I think February of 2020. She found them in a store. And so by the time I was like, okay, I do want them. All the stores had shut down. And you know, by the time all the stores opened up, everything was gone. I'm sure people were calling their essays and getting, you know, getting them because all we were doing was watching television. And oh my gosh, I'm I'm crushed every time I see them. And as you can see, I have three pair of, you know, dupes or things that are inspired by them. And I feel like Tevias actually are, came before the dad sandals. Tevias walked so dad sandals could run, right? <laughs> but I, I, want, I want the Chanel dad sandals. Oh my gosh. And you know what? This year, my friend found them. I have a friend who, like I said, she enables all my luxury purchases. She found a pair and I was like, mm, let me think about it and they were gone. And I haven't seen them in any type of decent condition for a decent price. I don't want to pay $2,000. I think the retail was right around a thousand for them. And I mean, if I do see them, they're like $2,000, which I'm just like, that's ridiculous. That's the price of a bag, not the price that I want to pay for some shoes that I'm going to be walking around the, the dirty streets of Chicago and wherever else in the world in. I'll spend a thousand dollars for them because I know I'm going to wear them. The reason I bought the Nike the Nike versions was I was at first I loved them and I was like but I'm not I gonna wear them I got the Nike versions and I was like oh let me see how I can style them and you know what let me know if you want to see a Chanel dad sandal video because like I I love these shoes and I could style them all day but yeah so I got the Nikes to see how I felt about them I love the Nikes then I got the Tevas I love the Tevas I I just got like I said I just got these Zara dupes because I'm I've just been like depressed. I was so depressed I left these shoes off of my, <laughs> my 2021 luxury wish list. But truthfully, these are my number one thing on the luxury wish list. And they're my biggest regret right now. And oh my gosh, if I get a pair, this will be the number one place where I will do my unboxing. And all that you guys will be hearing me doing is squealing like a schoolgirl. Until then, I'm over here with my three pair of dupes and insp inspired shoes and just making it work. If you enjoyed this video, you may enjoy my luxury wish list video. If you've stuck around, please give me a thumbs up. And if you like this and other luxury content, please think about subscribing. I'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>